first small stepping stone on the inevitable route to outer space. And what of the future, when the moon has become Luna Station, a transfer point on the well-traveled road to the planets and asteroids of our solar system? Will it gather a new crop of legends as deep and mysterious as the moon's fairies of a thousand years ago? We cannot know, but we can guess. Theater 5 presents The Wandering Spaceman. I like this place. The drinks are honest. The girls are pretty. Oh, there are a lot worse hangouts around here on Luna Station. Frank! Frank, I've been looking for you. When did you get in? A little while ago. Take a seat, Lars. We were just talking about you. Yeah, I can just guess the sort of things these baboons were saying. <laughs> Come to the office with me, Frank. We can talk privately. All right. See you, gentlemen. <laughs> Did you have a good trip, Frank? Oh, as usual. The Mars run nowadays is almost as much of a milk run as the shuttle trip back to Earth. But how's it been going with you, my friend? I miss this place. <laughs> have you? You know, sometimes I wonder about myself. Running a spaceman's dive carved out of the bedrock of the moon. <laughs> it's a fine occupation for a grown man with a daughter. <laughs> well, now, don't run yourself down, Lars. We astronauts need the spaceman's rest. Eh, uh, maybe... And I swear someday I'll toss half these space bums out of this place. Never let them in the front door again. Or oh, you shouldn't let them get you down, Lars. Hey, don't get Lars toner down. Don't worry yourself about that. Still know if I didn't have a daughter to support, I'd be tempted to pack up and find a job back on Earth. And at that, it might be better for her. Well, you'd both be missed, Lars. Especially Sally, eh? <laughs> well, don't be embarrassed, boy. I know how you feel about her. <laughs> well, I guess everyone on Una Station knows. You're a good man, Frank. The sort of man I'd pick for her myself. A captain on a scheduled transport, sober, good future. Frank, let me push my nose into your business. Why haven't you asked her to marry you? Well, I have, Lars. And she? Well, I guess she's not ready to settle down yet. Yes, I was afraid of that. She's like her mother used to be, wild. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You've heard about my wife, haven't you, Frank? I've heard stories. The stories are true. Whatever they say is true. She ran away from me, Frank. Ran away with a bum. Left her husband and her baby for a no-good pilot of a tramp freighter who set his course towards Venus. Traveled too close to the sun and burned himself, his ship, and my woman to a blackened cinder. Oh. Sally was only one year old then. I raised her myself. Watched her grow into a woman who looks like her mother did. And with her mother's blood... She isn't her mother, sir. Maybe she's not. But she has the same streak of wildness in her. I wish she'd marry a good man like you and settle down. Well, I haven't given up on that. No, no, of course you haven't, Frank. But you know what she does now? She comes to the rest and talks to the deep spacers, the captains who steer out beyond the asteroid belt. They have a certain look about them, Frank. A look like a one -hit. Who? He. The man who took my Laura away. Oh, Lars, you're making too much of this. Oh, maybe I am. Maybe I am. At any rate, I, I'd better get busy. Whatever you think of the spaceman's rest, it won't run itself. <laughs> well, I'll go out with you. Look, boy, there she is. You understand what I mean now? What? Sally. Look who she's with. 
He's one of them, all right. You can tell by looking at him. Tall, lean, with eyes you hardly dare to gaze into because of what they may have seen. She met him a week ago, and already she can't leave him alone. She's drawn to a man like a moth is drawn to a candle flame. I ought to go over there. Uh, take it easy. But they're only talking. There's no crime in that. Only talking, yes. But what are they talking about? I see your father is staring at us, Miss Sally. I do not think he approves of our being together so much. Poor Daddy. He's always worrying about me. <laughs> My mother... Yes, yes, I've heard the story. It is a sad one. There are many sad tales a man can hear in his wanderings from planet to planet. Has someone once said that human beings were meant to stay on their own world? And that any love affair that springs up away from Mother Earth is doomed from the start. What a curious idea. You don't believe it, do you? Well, when you wandered for as long as I have, you... You simply don't know what to believe. <laughs> but your father... That you meet the same fate as your mother. I think he really is. He says, I have my mother's blood in me. I think he really believes that he'll wake up some morning to find that I've followed some stranger into outer space. And you? Could you do what your mother did? I don't know. It would depend on the man, wouldn't it? Now that that young man. The one standing with your father. Oh, oh Frank. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's... Oh, well, he's really very nice. He'll be a important man one day. He's already captain of a ship on the Martian run. But he's not for you? No, he's not. I sometimes wish he were. But he's not. Oh, why am I telling you all this? A week ago, we were strangers. And if I were your father, Miss Sally... I would worry about you in much the same way he does. You should be more wary of strangers. But why? What can happen to me here? Who can say? A man from deep space might be anyone. He might be a dangerous criminal or worse. He might even be the wandering spaceman. Oh, who? A wandering spaceman. Now, don't tell me you haven't heard the tale. No, I haven't. Well, it also is a sad tale. The wandering spaceman was a captain in the early days of the Venus run. He was young, bright, ambitious. Then one day, he met a girl. One very much like you, Miss Sally. The planets, the stars, the whole universe became engaged, and he had one more trip to make before they were to marry. While the captain was in space, the owner of the space line happened to come to Luna Station and met the girl. He was neither young nor handsome, but he did have one advantage. He was very, very rich. Left to Earth with him just two days before her captain was to arrive back on Luna. At first, he thought of going after them, killing them both. But he realized that that would solve nothing. So he cursed all women and all men, too. He swore that he never wanted to marry, he never wanted to look at another human being. Next morning, he took a spacecraft out to the test run. And? And never was her from again. But what happened? Who knows? Some say that he wanders through the solar system, unable to land except once every seven years. At that time, he's given a single week to find a woman who might share his loneliness. And has he found one? It's only a legend, remember. What has he? According to the story, 
nerves. you, Sally? Me? But why? I think you know why. Where'd you sit down, Captain? Oh, I forgot. You two don't know each other. Captain Von Graff, Captain Grassy. Do join us. No, I really don't have time. Sally, I'd like to speak with you alone for a few minutes. I'm sure it can wait, Frank. In the meantime, do sit down. Captain Von Groff has been telling me the most fascinating story. I'm sure he has. It's about a space captain who has cursed all women and is condemned to wander between the planets. Perhaps you've already heard the legend of the wandering spaceman, Captain. Wasn't there something else about his landing every so often in order to find a woman who would share his life with him? Hmm? This legend comes from Earth. It was sold long before space travel was even heard of. Only then, it was not a spaceship that the captain traveled in. It was an old-fashioned sailing ship in which he roamed the seven seas. And instead of the wandering spaceman, he was known as the Flying Dutchman. Uh, quite true, Captain. Isn't it interesting how old tales like old truths keep popping up over and over again? I'm warning you, Captain, to stay away from Miss Toner. I have no interest in getting into a brawl with you, sir. Perhaps I'd better leave before the lady is further. Wait a minute. Frank, let go of me. Captain Von Graff? Mitchell? Wait a minute. Sally, come back here. Sally! Mitchell, wait for me. You want me, Miss Sally? I, I, I'm so sorry for what happened with Frank. When I see him again, I... Well, don't be too hard on the young man, Sally. I can't blame him for what he did. If I had a girl such as you... But I'm not his girl. I've already told you that. And you're so literal, my Sally. Very well, if I admire the girl like you, if I hope to have a girl like you, then I would not be happy to see you with a man like myself. Sally, we have been seen together far too much over the past week for your friend's peace of mind or for your father's, for that matter. And why shouldn't I be seen with you? Use your own good judgment, Sally. What do you know of me? Only that I am captain of the stranger, the tramp freighter, doing odd jobs out among the larger asteroids. It's not a very good prospect for a lovely young girl. No one seems to bother to ask me what I think. <laughs> Yes, you are right, Sally. Well, what do you think? I... Well, I don't know. Except that I want to know more about you. You're unlike anyone I've ever known, Mitchell. Even the other deep spaces. Somehow, I have the feeling that we were intended to meet. Perhaps it is better that we won't be seeing any more of each other. What do you mean? I'm leaving today, Sally. My ship is repaired and I must go back out there where I came from. Must you? Can't you stay a second week at least? No. No, I can't. Take me with you then. Take you with me? What? Take me with you. Take me into the space with you and let me wander with you through the vastness beyond Venus and Mars. Let me see for myself the loneliness of space. The loneliness? Please, Mitchell. I will walk you away. You'll hardly know you have me on board unless you want to. No. But why not? No, no, Sally. I've said no. You are a silly, romantic child. Now, stay here on Luna Station where you belong. Or better still, if I were your father, I'd take you back to Earth where you can get those ridiculous notions out of your head. Mitchell. Sally, I mean it. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I am. I think I do. I like the wandering spaceman we were talking about. No one knows where I go or what I do. Sally, I travel into space and disappear for seven years. I know. 
I'm saying goodbye to you now, silly. I'm going to the launching platform. Goodbye. Yes. You'll forget about me, Sally. You'll have to forget about me. Kiss me once before you go. Kiss you? Yes. Just once before you go. Oh, Sally. My Sally. If things were only different. Yes. And Graf's due to take off within the hour, and he was worried that you decided to take off with him. What? But take off with him. Stow away if you had to. Stow away. Oh, come, Sally. No. You go back, Frank. I want to be by myself for a few more minutes. Well, where will you be? Take Dad to the radar room. Von Graf's ship is leaving, and I... And you'll meet us there? Of course. I'll meet you there. <laughs> But I don't understand. Why didn't you bring her with you? Don't worry, Lars. She said she'd meet us in the radar room. I suppose she wants to watch Van Graaff's ship as it gradually moves off the screen. Yes, I suppose. Oh. But there's something about all this I, I just don't like. Well, here we are at any rate. He's not here. I told you, Frank. I told you there was something wrong. Well, we can't know if there's something. She's on that man's ship, I tell you. I don't know how she got on board, but she did somehow. I tell you, she's there. Well, if you're sure, we could have the ship searched. Don't waste time, man. Do it. Launching room? Uh, launching room. This is Captain Gradley speaking. I want you to hold the countdown for the spaceship stranger bound for the asteroid. Captain's name is... Uh... What's that? Are you sure? Well, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. What is it? It was just taking off as I was speaking. I knew it. I knew it. We actually don't know she was on board. Where right? else would she be? Turn up that number three screen to see if we can track a ship. There. It's that bright blip over there. We can keep her in sight for two or three hours. I see it. It's starting the elliptical course towards the asteroid belt. Well, look. What happened? The blip. What happened to the blip? It's gone. But where? Oh, How did it go? No. Let me see if I can find it on another screen. Could there have been an accident? A meteorite? An explosion? Something inside the ship? No, no, no. I don't think so. If it was, it would have showed up on the screen. No, no, Jay. It just disappeared. One instant it was there, and the next instant it was. It's as if it vanished out of time and space as we know it. What are you saying, Lars? Remember what you were telling me. He was talking to Sally about about the wandering spaceman, but that's like the old flying Dutchman you said. Van Graaff is a Dutch name. by Ted Bell. In the cast, Donald Buca, Jeff David, Francis Spanier, and David Kerman. Audio engineer, Marty Solia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastovsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs> Executive producer for Theater 5, Ted Bell. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking.